I don't know if you can hear me. Hey, yeah, we can. Awesome. Hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Hi, Shauna. Oh, look at Ashley. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ashley, <I> <laughs> oh, look at everybody awesome well i'm so excited i don't know there's a bunch of people here yay cool i was trying to log into two different stuff to see if it would work so you would have two different views um but Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Oh, that's Going through. Okay. I don't know. Ah, no. Okay. okay. Sorry, guys. So I think you have a second view of the skies. So I have a very messy bench, but oh, hi, everybody. My name is Tanya Larson. Uh, I'm so excited to be here today with all of you. Um, I'm going to show you how to make one of these uh, bone tools um, and I just wanted to share that pretty much out of the session uh, you will learn how to ask questions to be able to do this one. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you pretty good. Okay. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, I don't know if you can see this messy area on the other side, but um, I learned how to make my bone tools, uh, these ones specifically, through like taking someone's tool that they gave me and replicating it. Um, and so I just wanted to show that this was just, um, to remind you that the discussion does not, like this discussion doesn't replace the fact of going and asking elders or people in your community um, because there's many questions that I can't answer. And it's really important that now you would get the tools to have the questions to ask people. And so um, these bones that you make your tools out of are the front, um, I guess, the front leg of the caribou. And um, so whenever you know if someone's going out hunting um, and you want to tan something, to ask them if they bring you back hides to bring you this bone with it. And sometimes people are like, oh, you just want the bone so that you can have like the, the marrow. And you're like, no, 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 if you cut it here, I can just give you the marrow right away. We don't have to fight over that. Um, and so I didn't want to cut this live on a bandsaw because it's dangerous and I don't want to be distracted. Um, there's different ways of cutting a bone in half. Um, the like old timers can pretty much take an ax and just like split it in half. I tried that technique. I'm not at that level yet, so just so you know, if you know how to do that, let me know because I want to learn how to do it better. Uh, but you can ask someone to show you how they split the caribou bone in the center for uh, to make the tool. You can use a saw, you can use a band saw, you can use a scroll saw, and uh, you can ask, yeah, in your community who has those tools to be able to open it in half. And pretty much when I cut it, I follow where there's like this, there's like a natural dent here where there's the connection of the, of the leg. And pretty much you follow that all the way down the middle and then you'll have it open. And normally what happens is here, it'll be full of marrow. Um, 
So I've cleaned some already um, because otherwise it was going to be very dusty and very loud. But I'm going to show you how you can do it by hand. Um, first of all, whenever you work on anything that's including like um, your animals and stuff like that, you know, you just have to be like super respectful of the tool, but you also have to protect yourself. So whenever you work with tools, uh, power tools and animal parts, whether it's antler, bone, horn, you always want to, first of all, biggest rule of ever is use a hair tie and tie up your hair. Because uh, when you get really into your work, you might not notice and then your hair will get tangled or in your bandsaw or in your dremel and that could be very dangerous. Um, second, you could use an apron because whenever you use the bone tools uh, with the marrow inside and the sinew on the outside, it gets really messy and so you don't want to like be super, super messy. And then uh, the other pieces that I've brought here for this, which I forgot to say in the list, but I'm pretty sure everybody has it in their homes in the Northwest Territories. It's hockey tape. And so I use hockey tape on the bone to create this like ergonomic handles. I mean, this is just my way of doing it. You can do it whichever way you want. <laughs> Your granny may have done it completely different. It's fine. But when I'm trying to decide with uh, then and I that, I do it all day long. And sometimes here it's the same. And um, you get, you always will get callus and blisters from, well, maybe not always, but you can get callus and blisters if you're working on many hides. And usually when you're working on hides, you might be working on many. And so what I do is I really put a lot of hockey tape to create um, a handle that is comfortable in my hand. Because, I mean, you could just do your bone tool like this. It's completely fine. But it becomes slippery because you're usually working with it when it's wet. And... Um, that's my preference anyways. You can do it however way you want. Um, and then once you put hockey tape, uh, if you just leave it as is, as you work, it's going to get super sticky inside your hand. So then you wanna cover it with another material. This is fleece. I also have like my bag of fabric that I've been making masks with. I have tons of like leftover fabric. So if you have any scrap fabric and stuff, you can use it. And so um, what you can do is just roll it super tight and then, or you can cut the fabric in half here and then tie it up, or you can just sew it together. But uh, chances are each time you start your height camp, you want to make sure that these are done properly. So Whenever it's winter time and you haven't started yet, that's the time where you can um, fix all your tools before the season. So I have a tool, my tape. And so the other question that I'm gonna answer is, ooh, also whenever you work with knives and stuff like that, you wanna use your gloves. Um, Cause whenever you, you can definitely injure yourself, which I have, um, and so, okay, next, uh, I'm gonna show you how, like which angle to do your bone on, just because of the way I've learned with my, like reflecting the one of my elder. And so you can see there's this, the shape of the curve, the top here, that's not gonna be your edge. This bottom part is going to be your edge. And so you can use power tools if you want to create this bevel. And so a bevel is like your edge like this, and then it's gonna be like this pretty much. And so the flat part right here, I'm going to make it super flat. And then 
the outer part here, I'm going to make it into a knife's edge. Uh, that's important to know just in terms of tools because as you're scraping your hide, this is going to become dull. And so if you know how to make your edge sharp, uh, each time it gets dull, you'll be able to just with or a knife or with your file, you just do, you'll do flat here and then you'll have it angled here to create that edge. I'm gonna stop for a minute and ask if anybody has questions. Hey Tanya, this is Seklo. The side that you're using to scrape, that's the side that would have been split? Does that, does that question make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. Uh, what do you mean split? So, so when you split it, oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. So when you split it, this right. is the side of it. Uh huh. And usually there's like marrow here, so you take that out. Got you. Okay. So this is going. This is usually how it looks. You know, like it's it's yeah. Like uh huh. And when you span it out, I guess it'd be this side. Um, the other thing I was asked, wondering was prepping to actually get that bone. Like, how do you take the meat off? You ask someone to bring you a bone from the shins. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, once you have, like, once you have the bone, if, if there's, like, any meat on it still, what do you, how do you take it off? Um, I haven't. Like, you don't cook it, right? Uh, can I? Can I uh, help? Uh, so I just I just finished skinning a whole bunch of them. They don't actually have meat on them. It's just the skin and oh, okay. some ligaments. So it's not really it's very minimal when you're skinning, and it and it if you let it dry up a little bit, it looks exactly what Tanya has. And then I um, I had to soak them and scrub them with like a a dish scrubber to get oh. off. Yeah. Yeah, you just have to make sure that you cut all of the the hard stuff at the joints off. That's yeah. the that's the hard part. Right. Okay. Thank you. So I, I do most of the like you can scrub like that or you can also just use a Dremel uh which is like this machine and I do this because it's easily accessible for me since I have like I do, I make jewelry. And so it's just like a little motor and the handle, or it could be like a power sander. And um, you can, um, you can clean it all up. And then once you're clean, it looks like this, or you can also scrub it with soap and a dish scrub. <laughs> uh, it just takes a longer time. Uh, also, you can use a knife to clean it all up. Um, so yeah, what are we doing? Okay. Tanya, have you ever used a moose bone for this? Or is it recommended just to use caribou? Uh, I have a, I have a bunch of moose legs if you want me to do a workshop next time. <laughs> <laughs> for the whole process. <laughs> um, so I have both moose and caribou bones to make different tools. So with the moose bone, uh, with the front leg, you can also do the puncher to flesh the hide. And you can also do the same tool to scrape the hide like this. Um, culturally, I'm just wondering about using a moose scraper on a caribou hide. Is that, have you heard anything from elders about whether that's okay or would you keep only to caribou bones for caribou hides? I don't know. Those are the kind of questions that you would ask uh, your elders uh, or someone in your community. I, I ha like to have my tool, like I was given two tools when I was given my scrapers and it was a moose scraper and a caribou scraper. So I've always used my caribou bone for my caribou hides and my moose bone for my moose hides. So, but the, also today there's metal ones uh, instead of these, where they just use metals and like pipes on either side of the, the machine, uh, either side of the scraper. 
Uh, well, we have some time. I've never like practiced this, but I, do you want me to like clean a bone for you to see how it's uh, how you can do it, or do you want me to wrap the handles first? I think cleaning a bone would be nice to see. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to do with a knife or a Dremel? And maybe you just demonstrate both of them. Okay, good. <laughs> so I'll just plug this in. So I have two. Can you see anything from this one? Yep. Okay. You can see it, but it's the in a in the small area so is there a way to make it the main screen yeah yeah i think so i'll spotlight the view of her tool so you guys can see it better maybe yeah and i can change that around i think it's because it's muted on the spotlight and uh, okay because I, I can't i can't do two sounds at once otherwise it'll echo um a messy cleaning surface. So you always want to put your mask on when you're working. Like I said, uh, usually I would tell you to get an N95, but because of the world shortage right now, you can't. Um, you can get these ones. They still have some produced, and this is what I use whenever I work with my um, anthers and stuff like that. You have to put them in a Ziploc, otherwise they'll just be filled with dust in here when you're done working with it. And you have to write how much time you've actually spent using these because they need to be changed regularly. And uh, I share all of these like safety things, because going to art school, I read a book on all the art safety, and it's super important to be safe whenever you create dust. And so that's any anther work that I do, for example, for my jewelry or bone work. Uh, so you always want to think about your lungs in the long run, because you're creating dust. And so you might not want to do it inside or not beside someone who's in the room. I was going to show you. This is from Canadian Tyler, uh, Tire. It's just a Dremel. Um, and this is where you do the speed. So you can go fast or slow. This is your um, added tool because I like to be able to move my wrist. Um, you press on here and then you can close it or open it. And uh, this is one of the things that are that is available. Usually, it's a it's a kit with all kinds of different like sanding grits and stuff like that. So this is the power tool version of of cleaning a bone. Oh, so I'm just gonna do it close and put on my gloves. So this is what I would do. All Sorry, talking with a mask on. This is what I would do all around to take off this. It, c it can be an overkill, but what I'm gonna show you next is how to focus on your angle, because this will take forever to make with a file. So that's gonna be m taking more time. So just check it out. 
For whatever you, whenever you work on a tool, you want to be able to um, to anchor it on a surface so that you're not doing this. So I'm going to anchor it, hold it here, and I'm going to clean up this this edge right here to make it flat. All the ridges, <laughs> sorry guys, all the ridges is pretty much, it's all flat here. I don't know if you can see. So I've completely flattened it. And so my next step is right here is put the bevel in. And then that's gonna create a very sharp edge. It's so sharp, I literally just cut my thumb. <laughs> so that's how like you can, that's how you make a, like I guess a knife with your caribou antler. And so to make sure this is flat, as you can see, because it wasn't cut straight at some point when I sharpen this, it's going to become, um, I'll have to take this off, but I, I'm pretty sure I have one or two caribou hides I can tan or like scrape before I get to this point and then I'll just jump over here whenever I'm taking care of my tools after the season to to do it and so to make sure that it's completely flat you would just go with a file and do this and this is just for you to get used to the file because uh, that's your best tool when you're working on um, on hides is you really want to get to know how to work with your knives, how to work with your files. And so this is going to be your very flat, flat part. And so when I do it, I do it on both sides. So as it gets used up on here, it'll be flat here too. It's like you can tell it's really sharp. This is my thumb. That's why you put gloves on both sides. Um, but you can see it's like if I did this to my nail, it's like a knife. Uh, so sometimes this could be too sharp, but uh, caribou is really tough. Um, what you might want to do is empty this for now, and then um, after you can jump and do the bevel on this side. Does anybody have a question? 
Okay. There was a question about the file. Is it a fine grit file? Uh, this one is. I use fine grit to do finishing work. And then when you're like, instead, if you don't have a Dremel at home, you can literally use a, a coarse fi file to start with. And you just spend lots of time just doing this until it's perfectly flat. Um, and same for here. But whenever you're doing finishing work and you want like a nice finish on here, then I would use a fine grit file. So I have coarse and fine. And those are the two kind of files I have. And usually I have this little... So when you're out working, you can use your little speedy sharp. I don't know if you have this kind at home. Um, I love to use it for uh, different kind of high tanning tools, like the ones that are not shaped like a knife. And um, you would, you could just use this when you're working on your hide and you just want to get an edge back. So this is just, I guess what I'm showing you here is keep your uh, tool sharp and keep your bevel um, condition. So once you're done working on a lot of hides, before you put your tools away for the season, make sure you've cleaned them, taking off any pieces of like caribou meat on it or flesh and um, and make sure that it's the edge is done properly. So for example, here I'll show you. Just take, oh, I'll just take all of this out. So yeah, there's different ways of just cleaning this um, this sinewy parts out. So whatever is available at home, pretty much. Um, and if it's too sharp, you can just go over the edge with your uh, with your file. Because this is really sharp. But it'll be good to take off the flesh. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I have a question. It's Robin. Hey, Tanya. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> good, how are you? <laughs> I do. Um, <laughs> um, I'm wondering. Okay, did I'm looking at my bones. Did you create like? Did you just carve your own like little bevel on yours? Like, can you explain that a little bit better? And then, okay. Um, so I don't know. Whenever your tool, I'm trying to look at two tools and see how it looks. So your tool is like this, right? And when you split it open here, there's the rounded edge and then there's the flat edge. Just, sorry, these are the same side of the tool. <laughs> That's silly, sorry guys. <laughs> I'm trying to find opposite ones. Nope. Yeah, okay, it would be like this. So when you open it, there's the curved part on one side, and then there's the, the you can see it's straighter. You see like this part is straighter, and this is a curve. So where the curve is, that's not gonna be your edge. The flattest part of the bone, that's gonna be your edge. The only reason I figured that out is just because the bone I was given by somebody, like, there's the curved part and there is no edge here because it comes back in. Like it's like, a, it folds back in versus here. That's where you can do your edge. And so I don't know if you can see, can you switch the camera? I don't know if the other cam, well, it's just mine. I'm gonna try it, okay. So does that answer your question, Robin? Like how this is the curve and this is the flat part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I was just, I was just wondering because like, I think, okay, I was just looking at my bones. And I, I have another question um, with the flesher and the caribou bone. Are they both from the front legs? 
that's what I was told. So because I've never wanted hunting, um, I only get gifts from people who come back and who brings me bone. And so what I was taught is always ask for the bones that are on the two front legs of the animals because those are the long ones that you can make tools out of. Um, so the okay. day I go hunting, I can answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I've been asking around and I've heard it before from that it was the front bones, but yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, it's the, that's what I was told to. It's the front bones. Um, so that's yeah. the one I want to focus on. And then so I guess another way is you see the curve here. Whenever you flatten it, this is going to be your flat part that you want to keep straight. And the natural curve you want to use to make your bevel. So then it creates like a, a triangle, I guess. And that's going to be your edge. There's going to be a flat part. And then you're going to, with your, with your file, you're going to make this an angle that meets the flat part. And at the meeting of this corner, that's going to be like this. That's where the edge is going to be created. Am I explaining that right? Uh, like correctly? Do people understand that? I understand, Tanya. What what angle are your um, is your edge at? Like, if you had to guess. <sighs> I was like, I don't like a four, 45 degree angle, 45, 50. I don't know if you can see it. It's like, I follow, I really follow the natural curve of the bone. And um, that's what I, that's how I, I get mine done. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Okay. Cool. What do you use to condition your bone? Oil, any oils. Um, I like you can use vegetable oils or coconut oil. I was like, my biggest disclaimer is this is just what I do. Um, other people might have different ways of doing it, so I just want to make sure that um, ask your elders, ask uh, other people in your community what they like to use. But I will use like vegetable oils or like to rub to rub it before I put it away for the summer uh, and you can see when it becomes dry you constantly want to make sure that it doesn't become dry and brittle otherwise it can crack over time um, so yeah I any other questions Nina wants to see a close-up of the edge oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is the edge I just created. So this is was the piece, and it's like super straight on this side, like super flat and straight here, and then the the angle is like this. Does this help? It's really hard to show when it's not in person. So, and it it should be sharp it should not be rounded and whenever you scrub um scrape caribou hide this will become rounded so that's why you constantly want to keep the same um one flat one angle otherwise sometimes you're lot like i always think of my i line as my edge like thinking of it as a knife um because if you were to do um filing on both sides it's way harder to get an edge you have to be way more um, skill with the file so that's why i like to keep one side flat one side angled so that you never make the mistake of creating a zigzaggy line on the edge i hope that helps for an explanation okay any other questions um, I have a question about conditioning. Yes. Um, if you're, are you, you're doing it only at the end of summer, but if you start to notice like you're scraping lots and it starts to get dried out from the heat or whatever, how, are you just like putting a layer of oil, rubbing it in and then letting it sit for a day or something? Yeah, it's like, 
that's how you would treat your phone, like your your tools it's like an extension of yourself so if it looks dry if you your arms look dry you would just put moisturizer on it um, and like it's a bone so you just yeah you want to take care of it so that it lasts the longest and that's why once you're done like whenever you borrow a tool from somebody you always give it back to that person whenever they give it to you usually the tool is clean it does not have flesh parts on it or hair or anything like that so when you're done using your the tool you want to make sure that it's completely clean your handles are clean you try to take out as much bits of flesh uh, from the caribou and uh, always ask the person you borrow your tool from is how they like their angle so for example this is me that likes my angle like that someone else might like it differently but um I, yeah people like my tools because they're sharp so that's what i like that's how i do my sharp tool so that's what i'm <laughs> that's what i'm sharing with you. <laughs> if you if you're like um if you're giving it back to somebody would you condition it too or no no, no. It's usually you're you're out at camp right or yeah yeah unless you like took it for a long time never place a bone tool on a low surface because dogs can take it. And I'm only talking about that through personal experience. And it's horrifying if you board a tool and a dog stole it and ate it. So don't ever leave it on the ground, on your chair or anything. Always put it back in your tool bag and close it because dogs will eat it. It's perfect bone. And it's already, yeah, it's nice to chew on. Any other questions? Um, and if you're, if you're after you condition it if you go to scrape again do you like wipe off excess oil or do you have to do anything beforehand no you start, no yeah. usually it, it usually it um sucks it in so okay cool thank you no worries. great questions thanks for the questions i like it um, there was a question um do you sharpen your tools every time you use it and can you show us how to sharpen it from this camera angle okay okay i'll drop this a little bit there's different ways of doing it so usually in my tool bag there would be my bone we don't need it um there'd be the speedy sharp and this is the other one but you can't use it on any other tools but knives so um it's getting dull also you all, always have a file so you have a file a speedy sharp and a knife so there's different ways of doing it where you can use a knife and you always want to place your your like tool on a surface so you're not doing this and then if you're using a knife the blade always go the opposite direction of you so that you don't snag on something and like cut your throat um, and this is how you would do and then I would look at it and then I would do here and I want to do it flat so this is with a knife how to check if your tool is sharp but you you just like a knife, you do, you, you um, go around the edge and it should sound sharp and it should feel grippy. Or you could put it over your nail and like, does it take off the, like, the top surface of your nail, pretty much. And that's a very sharp tool, that's like a knife. Um, it'd be the same, like, for a quick sharp, I would use or a knife or a speedy sharp. If you're done like 10 hours of scraping and it's getting rounded because of the amount of work you're doing, um, you would do place it and then you do this motion. And then here I do it flat. So usually what happens, you can notice, I only do two passes on the flat part because it always stays flat. And then I always do more here. 
and then it should be sharp. I'm giving my myself, <laughs> myself a manicure. Uh, and then it's the same with the Sharpie, speedy knife. Um, be careful, this one takes a lot off because it's a carbide edge. And yeah, again, it's it's really sharp all over. You just want to have a good edge and not a rounded one. Was that a good explanation? Any other questions? Hi, Melissa. <laughs> this is my friend from Alaska. I just saw her on the screen. <laughs> Okay. Um, this is so cool. Thank you for offering your knowledge. Yay. Uh, this is really fun. Uh, <laughs> only a few people that are at the top. So, um, okay. So I'm going to show you the next. Do you understand now how to, like, I didn't clean all of it because it might take the whole session, but you just want to clean it as much as you want, can until your bone looks like this. So you see the difference between like dried with still flesh on it. I mean, you could use this to scrape your hide, but if you're at camp, you kind of want your tools to look good. And so this is how I would want my tool to look because there's no bits left. And it's just about honoring the animal. And this is a tool like that you kind of want to give like maybe someone you teach in the future because you know how to make bone tools. So if you have a student, um, this is something that you can give them and then you'll know that your legacy is going to be carried forward and then you're going to make a high tanner out of them by giving them the tools because then they'll have to use it to honor you. So those are the kind of things you want to think about. So you want it to be nice. Um, and then I'm gonna show you how to just wrap it with hockey, like with a hockey tape. I'm probably gonna do it here this, this much, and it's just gonna give me enough space to hold it. Um, you just need this much of a work surface really on a tool, because you're not, like, if you look at the scrapes that you create when you're actually scraping the hide, it's usually this much. Um, so you don't need all of it. You probably need just this to actually scrape a uh, caribou. And so I've never played hockey, so it's funny that I'm giving advice on hockey tape. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you have more questions, I can answer while I'm doing this. You look like you've played hockey before, <laughs> wrapping it just like I do. <laughs> well, I mean, stick, bone, same thing. Uh, an another part of when you're pulling the um, skin off the leg bones, if you get them as like full legs, something that my auntie taught me is that you can you can like trade with people um as far as like the tendons go because you can actually i just took my hair down because you can actually make hairpins out of them and a lot of the ladies will you know will want them and you can actually trade for them so she has like a whole thing she'll like i'll pull the hair bones off if you give me the actual bones <laughs> the hairpins <laughs> off so i don't know if people do that but she sent me a video that she made like years ago if anyone is interested Nice. I want to see it. I think you can share the link in your comments and people okay. will see it on the chat. Yeah, it's just on my Facebook. I think I actually just messaged it to use Tanya, so I'll send. So this part, you just want to make it until it fits nicely in your hand. So I also like to use the hockey tape because if you put the fabric directly 
onto the bone, it'll just slide off once it gets wet and you've used it a lot from, from working on your hide. So it's just something that you want to think about. So I do this on both sides. So I was told, yeah, whenever you ask a hide from somebody and they want you to tan it, usually it's like you would ask for the front legs, not the whole leg, just the bone. Um, and then you would ask for the brain of animal uh, or the head if they, they don't want to do the extra work. And like that, you have everything that you need to tan a caribou or a moose which is really cool like it comes pre-packaged with its own tool to uh tan its hide so it's like if you think about it it's like a really beautiful gift that's already all included um and then these are great items if you want to trade with somebody um i still have a heart like i just know that so, like some animal parts you should just be trading with others. Unless you like you can ask to be paid for your time of like skinning the uh, the legs, cleaning the bone, cutting it, beveling it but just make sure they know that you're not selling the actual caribou bone, but they're, you're selling the, the time it took you to do all of that work, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm testing it. It's like, it works good. It feels good. I know it's gonna get super sticky. So um, once I made some I asked like an elder what they like to make their their handles out of and they said flannel. I think they said flannel. So I'm going to try flannel for the first time. So these are just like strips. Uh, these are good things to recycle. Like if you have an old shirt that has a bunch of holes or you can't donate it or something like that, you can just cut it up and make your um, your handles with it. I was like, I had it. Sorry. Oh, it's here too. But if you want something pretty, these are all my fabric scraps from the making masks that I couldn't use. So I kept them. So you can also use one that you want to wrap with that. Uh, to do the outside covering, I guess. Um, so there's a lot of things to save from these fabrics. Does anybody have questions? I'm gonna show you two ways. The easy way is just splitting the end and then you'll tie a knot with that. But if you do tie a knot with it, because it will come apart um, over time, is do not tie your knot 
where you're holding the tool. Otherwise, it's going to cause a blister and be uncomfortable. So you would do it closer to where your the end of your tool is. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did this part. So I, I wrapped it a little bit around and then I cut two strings. I put the top loop going down and then here and it's right at the angle. Sorry, everything I use is black. <laughs> I didn't think of that. <laughs> um, and then you just wrap it and then you just tie it, double knot it. If you have more, you can triple knot it. And then if you see there's little pockets here created by the natural curve of the bone. So all of my excess, I'll just hide it in here. And you take your spoon or your scissors and you just stuff it in. And here you got a handle and it's black fleece and I'm wearing a black shirt so you can <laughs> I'll do the makeup brush. This is how it looks like. And then the um, this is really good. You could just use this or if you want to add a decorative element to it, you could cut this fabric and do the same on the outside. This is my scraps from my dress. I want to cover this part. So you see I'm kind of like putting all the pieces of fabric. I'm doing a little knot here and I'm all the rough edges. I'm folding it in as I'm turning. So that right here, it's all neat and clean. And then you just wrap your tool with your nice scrap fabrics that you saved because you're a material hoarder like I am. <laughs> and then as I come to um, at the end, as I'm folding it, I'm folding both inside so that there's no edges from the fabric. I'm going to cut this here in half. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do it. So the, there's the two tails here. I'm gonna lift the bottom one. I'm gonna hide the other one on the other side. And this is what I'm gonna tie. Like the other time. And I want my knot to be inside the tool. Double knot it or triple knot it. Um, I do it, there's two different ways. You could do your fabric like this where you just knot it. The reason why I tried that is last year I made one for like a traded one for someone's birthday and I was checking on their hides this year and as I'm working on it the fabric part just like fell off. And that's because I stitched it. 
And once you stitch it, it's really hard to re-sew it, but it will become used. And so you, there's like, if you use flannel, I think it might be better. So you could just use thread and as you end, instead of like cutting the two tails, you would just use the fabric that's on here and with a needle, you would um, stitch it on, but you want it to be extremely tight. So then this is how it looks like with a handle that's with like pretty flowers. And um, you just wanna make sure that whenever you, like you can use hand sanitizer after to clean it and you wanna dry it because it will be get wet and then it'll start smelling. So each time you use it, you wanna dry it. You have a tool. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> And, and so yeah, the next step is you want to make yourself a toolkit so that you can store all of your tool, like tools in it and you can have like all of your essential with like chip pockets long enough for your tools. So now I have, a, my toolkit is filled. So I have my knife to cut off the hair and my bone to scrape off the hide, my files, and my little speedy sharp. And like that, if you're taking a bathroom break from tanning or a snag break, you just roll it up with its long thing, like long here. You can tie it up if you like, if there's animals, you don't want them to come around, you'll just tie this up and then with the long loops, you could like hang it from a tree branch or put it up on a tree branch so that it's out of reach of animals. <laughs> Clearly, I've been traumatized. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, it's canvas. I think this one is thin canvas. And then I just use bias tape. And this is some, um, like, I don't know. I got this on clearance at a store while I was shopping for my jewelry. So it's just rope or you can use this, I guess. Yeah, sweet. And uh, yeah, if you make your own tools, please tag me in it. I totally wanna see how your tool is. And if you have questions, yeah, don't like, I don't mind answering them uh, later on too. So. I think we're done. We just made a tool in an hour. I better show it. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, it was so fun. Hopefully we can have another soon. Yeah, we could try the really big puncher. I think that would be great. Somebody on here was asking me if we could organize that, so. Yeah, I have like I have a loss of legs because someone um, traded me this year, so I'll expertise my own skills and then I can show it off, show it off to you guys if you want. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. This was really lots of fun. Happy high tanning. <laughs> I wish I was with you. <laughs> and Tanya. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.